Hello. I hope you can all hear me. Hello and welcome to day three of AISS. We are starting off with a very powerful session by Force Point, uh, who are the leaders in end to end security. So, in this day and age of uh, uh, COVID and work from home, uh, there are boundaryless organizations, and it's become all the more important to see that how we can get a comprehensive view on security and have a single pane from which to control, uh, be it the network side, the cloud side, or data leak prevention. Uh, so we have this masterclass by Forcepoint. We'll cover all these aspects. And the three things to really consider are in this pandemic age is the work, the workplace, and the workforce, and how we can provide cybersecurity to in all these respects. So with that, I would like to hand over to uh, Forcepoint, uh, who are uh, going to join this session. And how do we do this masterclass? Uh, they will guide you through the different steps. And yes, can I please have the Forcepoint? Yes, hello, Ayush. Hi, good morning. Yes, hello, Ayush and Akshay. So they are the experts from Force Point who will walk you through this presentation. Over to you. Hi, uh, good morning, all of you. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great time today. Uh, thank you for sharing your precious time with us today morning. And uh, I believe it's Friday morning, so we might be closing our week. So no better time than this to have a Force Point masterclass to initiate and rejuvenate you on the Friday uh, morning. So uh, my, my name is Akshay, as uh, mentioned by Dr. Sriram, and uh, I am handling uh, pre-sales operations for Force Point India North region for enterprise. And I'm joined by Mr. Ayush Mehan. He's also a technical consultant and a pre-sales handling uh, defense and uh, government sector for Force Point uh, for India and SAC. So uh, before you know, I put across to you uh, on this master class today. Just wanted to give you an idea that uh, how we are structuring this particular session today. So we'll be having uh, a, a discussion around zero trust security. Along with that, we'll be talking about uh, some of the key elements in the cybersecurity industry today, which might be uh, you know considered by many many organizations, and sometimes they, these are also missed. Uh, during our approach towards zero trust uh, along with that we'll be having two quiz sessions so i will be appreciate appreciating all the attenders or attendees i would say that you stay with us till the end and you'll find out uh, you know two quizzes during the session and you might win uh, some good and exciting prizes so i'll start my session uh, by giving you an idea that we are going to have uh, amazon eco show five on the go today so these are the takeaways uh, for the quiz winners so i will really appreciate if you stay with us till the end and uh, answer the questions uh, where you'll find out you know in the, in the presentation you'll be find out the answers for those presentations going forward all right so uh, yes you can if you have questions please do type in the chat window yeah right so if you have any questions during the session if you have any doubts during the session definitely you can type type them uh, in the chat window and uh, me or Ayush will definitely help you to answer or we can connect sometime later on as, as well to you know provide you detailed information about your questions and doubts so we'll be yes, happy to yes. and one more point is that uh, there's a lot of interesting things and in implementing the zero trust architecture that people know and have so for more resources and all they will certainly post like while they may not be able to cover every detail in this section they will post right. links for further resources and contacts for you to contact um, i mean people for you to contact okay right. so do you want uh, an engagement with them right thank you right so uh i'll go forward and uh, you know talk about you know we have a lot of we, we have seen and we have heard a lot that a very very famous uh, english proverb which is called the more the mirror uh, we 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 know that whatever we put, how much you know, if we talk about effort, if we talk about any any such thing in the in the world, whatever you know, the more we put in, the more benefit we get in. But that but is it exactly happening in our uh, you know IT infrastructures? Is it actually happening 
uh, in our security infrastructure, I would say, uh, if I come, if I specifically talk about the security infrastructure or ID infrastructure, the answer would be no, because the more we put things might not be the mirror going forward or still, if you see your own infrastructures, uh, you have too many of tools, you have, you know, such large environments where you have, you know, n number of tools from endpoint to cloud security. But at the same time, what do you get? You get so much of complexity, you get so much of, you know, problems in, in maintaining the efficiency and maintaining those solutions, whether it is on endpoint or on the cloud. So I'm talking about from the endpoint to the cloud. So all the, you know, your entire infrastructure from your perimeter security or cloud security or endpoint security or data loss, uh, you know, strategies, all those things are adding up layer by layer by layer. So it is adding complexity day by day in your environment and which is causing uh, the problems for the organizations to run their businesses. Because it's too much of uh, problems which are happening. Okay. Now uh, from the, what exactly are, uh, you know, what, what exactly has been our op operational uh, processes? Okay. Uh, what, what, what is going wrong exactly? What has happened over the period of time? Okay. The problem is that whenever there is a challenge in an, in any organization, we have a solution for it. Okay. Then the problem come again. Then we have another solution. Then we have another problems. Then we add two more solutions to it. So we are not taking the approach in a way where we, you know, put across all our problems and think about a solution, a single solution or, or a problem, uh, you know, uh, or, or a way where we can have a single solution to all our problems. Okay. So now because of this approach, there has been an added layers on top of our infrastructures on top of our security line, you know, security parameters, which has added those complexities, which have added those, uh, you know, uh, challenges to maintain those uh, uh, solutions over a period of time. Now, what exactly it has bring to us? It has actually brought uh, loss of visibility because you have so much to handle. You have so much to, you know, uh, maintain. You have so much to look at. You have so much to investigate. So at some point in time, you will feel that you're losing the visibility, you're losing the control over things and which will eventually cause, uh, you know, breaches that will eventually cause, uh, uh, you know, problems, which you cannot, which will, which will never be investigate over the period of time. So what exactly do we see in, uh, you know, 2021 plus, because over these past years, and if I talk about in last two years, there has been a significant uh, movement towards the digital transformation, which we have seen across the globe but did organizations were actually focusing on actual digital transformation during the pandemic no they were actually focusing on running their businesses so business continuity was one of the important criteria for having the digital transformation because people were moving to home so it was very very evident for organizations to transform their businesses to adapt that scenario but over the period of two years organizations have learned that this would not run or this will not go a very long way uh, the way they have been operating there have there, there has to be some significant or substantial transformation or some solid transformation i would say uh, which needs to be there in the coming years which will give them stable growth which will give them stable uh, you know uh, transition from their traditional approaches to the digital transformation journey so what exactly the organizations will look out organizations will look out for the platform based solutions okay the time has gone where you'll pick up and choose point products you will pick up and choose one two three four products and then you'll try to you know talk you know you make them talk to each other you will ask one oem then second oem and ask them to integrate with each other it takes a lot of effort it takes a lot of time and oem you know they are not talking to each other they're not talking even you know their technologies are not talking their people are not talking so how will they integrate it's not easy to integrate different two types of different solutions uh, to give you desired results so now organizations are actually moving towards platform based technology where they'll build a platform and on that platform they'll try to switch the different solutions so that they can talk to each other they can give you desired results they can give you efficiency and proper investigation approach towards incidents which are happening in your environment so it's an it's an approach which organizations definitely will going to be uh, you know consider in in the coming time and what will be the strategy so overall strategy will not be that okay my user is roaming or my user is in office i'll protect the user i'll protect this and that 
the overall strategy of the organizations would be to stop the bad and free the good. I will make my user efficient. I will make, yeah, use, make my user protected. And I will ensure that any bad thing which is coming to his system or which is bad thing, you know, any bad thing happening to his credentials or maybe his identity will be protected. But at the same time, if he's good, if he's doing good on this, if he's digitally behaving good, if his, uh, you know, access controls are good, uh, if his overall, uh, you know, uh, the, the way he works or the way he performs in the organization is good, then I will ensure that his access remains good. So it totally depends on the, uh, you know, organization to organization, but the overall strategy remains or revolves around the same topic that we need to stop the bad. At the same time, we need to give our users proper channel to work, to increase their productivity, to help the organizations to run the business in the, uh, you know, in, in the bad times. Now, how uh, this digital transformation is actually happened, okay? So we, you know, we had our swanky uh, glass offices. Maybe, you know, some of you are working in metro cities. Many of our are working in NCR. So we have our glass offices where we, were, we used to sit. Majority of our working time used to spend there, okay? A very little people had the privilege to work from home at that point in time. And uh, we were very, very uh, fortunate to get that work from home permit from our organizations. But the major focus of any organization was to secure their offices, secure their perimeters, because that's where the major population was actually sitting. Major population was sitting and major populations were working. And the major amount of time which a user spends on production laptops or maybe <clears throat> or maybe your uh, production systems would be in office so but post pandemic the user who used to sit in the offices now they are working from their homes maybe they're from their bedrooms their living room so we have our you know own comfort areas in our in our home to work but yes the transformation has happened the biggest transformation in the history of it has happened in the last two years i would say when majority of the people, when the major chunk of your resources have moved from offices to their homes. And that is really, really fascinating to understand <clears throat> and how the security teams, IT teams had worked relentlessly over the period of time to you know, accommodate the situation. But this situation was not easy because we were moving from a workplace cybersecurity uh, you know, paradigm to a workforce cybersecurity par paradigm. So it is, it is not easy. It seems to be very easy for an employee to work from home, but for an IT uh, uh, team or for a cybersecurity team, it was a nightmare. This transition is still not completed. Many organizations are still uh, on the verge of doing this transformation completely in their organization. So they will be future ready for any such instances because no, no one has ever thought that this transition can happen so fast uh, and in on a, on a large scale, on that large scale uh, on which it happened uh, in last two years. So this transformation is something which uh, we have seen. Now, how, uh, you know, we can summarize this transition. What exactly uh, has been transformed? So if you see, uh, workflow cybersecurity predominantly was based on perimeter-based components, uh, infrastructure focus, a lot of, you know, uh, stack-based components were uh, were provided on the on the facilities to make sure your users, your data, your applications, your infrastructure remains protected. Operational definitely complexity was there to maintain that much of you know uh, you know thousands of users working from an office and going uh, to internet to applications to data to DCs to third party data centers. So complexity was there. Uh, rule based approach and a very rigid network and definitely a very high cost high cost uh, growth was seen when. Uh, workplace, workplace cybersecurity was in the picture. But when the market uh, changes, the overall trend changes, when it changes to workforce cybersecurity, the overall understanding of cybersecurity has changed. Now the focus was shifted from the office to the user, where we wanted a uh, user to be in a distributed places where we can have a distributed zero trust uh, you know, network or zero, zero trust based security approach. At the same time, the focus was now on the user, protecting the user, protecting the data and the applications which he was accessing. That was the 
important aspect for any organization while moving them from work for uh, you know workplace cyber security to work for cyber security now uh, when the users are working from home then definitely all the other parameters like understanding how users are actually behaving are the users spending too much of too much of time the, uh, of their time on the system are they working uh, in non production hours how, what applications they are accessing from home are they are i mean i mean they are authorized to access those applications but why they are accessing those op- uh, applications because now being an organization i cannot see my see my employee working the employee is working from home he is working from a system but still i cannot uh, have any digital record that what exactly is being done on his machine so risk adaptive capabilities where because the risk is high the user is sitting at home so overall risk adaptive capability is something which has been considered by the organization uh, at a very large scale and at the same time moving to cloud technologies because it's no more infrastructure based it's no more you know your people will you know again come to your on premise infrastructure and go to their applications and accessing data so it's more on cloud because people will connect directly to cloud to have better efficiency and overall cost will reduce if you give access to your people while working from home through cloud so this is the mega trend which we saw but was this easy no it had a lot of complexity as i mentioned earlier and uh, definitely it is not a, it is not a thing which can happen overnight it took a lot of time for it teams and still i said it is undergoing it it's a multi year mission i would say uh, which will be taken uh, uh, up by the boards of multiple organizations to ensure that their transitions strategy should be very clear that if the people are working from home or in hybrid environment going forward how the users applications data are protected uh, cost and consolidations were you know one of the primary uh, problems which are you know which were faced by the organizations because you understand that there have been significant amount of investments which have already been done by the organizations and still new investment needed to be made at that point in time when the transitions was happening that was not easy at all and when you shift from a particular technology uh, which you were running for so many years and suddenly you move to a new edge uh, you know new age technology then it becomes a little difficult for for your it teams for your staff to handle it not for it teams and staff but also the users who are going to experience a new way of accessing their resources will also face uh, challenges and complexities while uh, you know changing from one technology to another and then definitely uh, we all have those regulatory uh, compliances and uh, you know risk of deliveries all those things were part of the overall transition and still it is going on for larger organizations some small or mid segment organizations have already moved to cloud or you know they they have already transformed their infrastructure and cyber security approach to uh, uh, a workforce cyber security or a workforce infrastructure approach but yes for large organizations there is a way to go because there is still a lot of dilemma whether they should go completely they should remain there so a lot of discussions happening but yes transitions are something or transformation is something which has to be done now if i talk about a uh, four point strategic alignment uh, to this landscape so if i talk about four uh, workplace cyber security and workforce cyber security uh, there is a cohesiveness uh, between these two components so, so they are not isolated they are not separated they has they they have to meet at some point in time when the transition is happening so on the left hand side of my screen if you can see uh, there is a traditional cyber security elements which generally covers your uh, workplace cyber security generally your network perimeter security like your firewalls your ips your ids all those you know uh, swanky network perimeter security devices which you put across your infrastructures then your threat detection and response uh, compo- components your rule based data loss preventions your edrs your you know all those capabilities which you have on the endpoint to protect the endpoint from uh, being uh, you know uh, if it is misbehaving or some sort of uh, compromisation happens on the endpoint then there is a work for cyber security components like uh, i talked about uh, the user risk i talked about uh, user behavior so continuous assessment is something which has been considered uh, which is something which needs to be added in the cyber security approach uh, for monitoring the users to understand what they are doing are they happy are they not how much work pressure they are having or are they doing something wrong which may harm the organizations going forward so that kind of continuous assessment needs to be done over the period of time for the users risk adaptive responses 
So this is really, really uh, interesting. We'll be covering this part in a little detail going forward in, in today's uh, masterclass. But just to give you an idea, risk adaptive responses are something which are totally based on uh, the risk exposure or uh, risk associated with a user and how your technology is responding towards that risk. So these risks could be your indicators of compromise or indicators of behaviors. We'll talk about it in a uh, in some time from now. But yes, risk exposure is one thing and adapting to that risk and having a response to that risk is the another thing. So that, that is also one of the uh, important pointers in workforce cybersecurity to, uh, to give back <clears throat> or to you know focus on that particular user and understand his risk exposure and at the same time you should have a cyber security which should be you know uh, which should be interactive and consumable at the same time when you talk about work for cyber security and along with that when you when you talk about this transition happening from a traditional cyber security elements to uh, the transform cyber security elements overall operation through transition and Having a bi-directional communication between the new technology to the old technology is something which is uh, definitely needed. And it is being actually applied in multiple organizations. As I mentioned, this transition has not been completed. So many organizations are working in that transition where these two types of uh, you know, uh, cyber security paradigms are talking to each other. They are in the transition phase where many operational uh, capabilities have been launched in order to integrate these new technologies with the old uh, or the uh, you know legacy based cyber security technologies which were there now if i talk about the product alignment how the products are actually aligned uh, from force point and in in these two you know landscapes so earlier we used to have a traditional dlp system traditional iot systems uh, sandboxing or anti malware devices we had ngfws you, we have secure web gateways on our system, edge dome devices, a lot of you know multiple types of devices we used to have in a workplace cyber security. Now, if I talk about uh, the hybrid mode or I, the transition phase where you have those hybrid infrastructures, hybrid people working from some people working from home, some people working from offices, then you have a zero trust web gateways, a zero trust firewall as a service, uh, zero trust content, CDR, and RBI kind of technologies, which can help you in order to see uh, whether the user is in office or outside. Uh, the data, the application, the user remains safe with the zero trust approach, which we carry out on these technologies. We'll talk about these technologies in a while, but just to give you an idea to you know to set up that stage for you that these are some of the important technologies which are really helpful in the transition phase. And then definitely, uh, if I talk about a particular user, the next generation uh, data protection uh, uh, solution, and that we call as DUP, uh, dynamic user protection, is something which is really, really important to understand the risk, to understand the overall risk exposure by the user and applying automated policies based on the risk exposed by the uh, user. And at the same time, uh, we do have our next generation access protection force point CSG or a cloud security solution, which actually provides capabilities to have, uh, you know, give you access control, visibility, application controls, data protection on cloud, and at the same time, risk adaptive approach over a period of time for your users. So that is something where these, you know, two types of traditional technologies and, uh, uh, you know, hybrid blend of these two will be taken care by force point in a long run for our customers. Some of them are still in the transition. Some of them already transformed. So that is something, but it's a long journey. It's not something which is going to go for a, uh, for a long time, but yes, it's an overall process, which will be continuing, which, you know, organizations have to rethink again and again and uh, change their strategies uh, uh, from the cybersecurity perspective. Now, by putting the Workforce protection portfolio for Force Point. How we are actually, you know, giving you those solutions. So we have clubbed our technologies in three different areas, as I mentioned. One is your uh, insider risk point of view. The other one is your data protection, and the third one is your uh, SaaS and zero trust cloud-based technologies. So Force Point is one of those organizations which have those controls from end to end, from a user to the cloud, and anything comes between that user in cloud will be protected and will be, uh, you know, some sort of solutions will be given to you to stitch to that platform which you are looking
looking forward to protect your users, whether they are on the go or in the office, it doesn't matter. So from an insider threat perspective, we have solutions uh, which can actually do a uh, user monitoring, which can actually uh, understand the overall risk exposed by the user. And then you can put across and integrate those solutions with data loss prevention solutions for automated policies. Then we have a flagship data protection solution, uh, which has been a Gartner data for a very, very long time. <coughs> I'm sorry. And uh, this solution is not only limited to your endpoints, not limited to your email channel, but it expands to your cloud security solutions. And as well as it integrates with your uh, risk adaptive capabilities where based on the risk exposures, it can automate the policies for data loss. Then we have a zero trust and uh, SASE based cloud technologies, cloud security technology, which includes a platform for a uh, secure web gateway, having your applications secured uh, connected securely along with the Caspi solution. Uh, we have a uh, cloud-based NGFW SD-WAN solution and email security solution on the cloud and a converged SSC platform to give you end-to-end -end protection. And now within this, uh, we are not actually only a cloud native uh, solution provider, but uh, we are one of those organizations and a very few which provides you that transition, which you are looking forward from a hybrid cloud to a, a single agent capability. So. It's, it's like, you know, we are executing those conversions and those transformations at the customer place where they actually want to move from a traditional cybersecurity model to a hybrid than to a pure cloud. So we provide them a path from where they can actually go from a traditional cybersecurity to a hybrid mode and then to a pure cloud mode. And that too happening with all with a single agent. So a single platform for a single with a single agent will give you that capability and that security efficacy and efficiency where you can maintain the solution well uh, you can have proper visibility and control over your users applications and data now in order to make this particular you know uh, sas cloud security insider risk solutions more effective forcepoint has done three important acquisitions in last one year so it's a significant amount of investment forcepoint is doing towards technology uh, Forcepoint has acquired three different technologies uh, uh, in the last one year. The first one is the Deep Secure. Deep Secure is one, one of those organizations which take care of uh, the content and the malicious information put across within a particular file. So it works on a CDR technology, which is called Content Disarm and Reconstruct. So we'll talk about it a little uh, in, in our session today. But yes, Deep Secure is something which has uh, been a very very great technology we have integrated with we have integrated deep secure with uh, some of our technologies till now but yes we are in the process of integrating it fully with our complete stack so it will be a wonderful technology where you we will provide a zero trust capability on the data which is being transferred to the user machine without even trusting on his identity without even trusting on his connection any data which is coming to the user machine will be checked for any malicious code for any unwanted information which is coming to the user while he's accessing the application or internet to access that data so that is the capability which we are giving with the deep secure acquisition the other one is cyberring first point uh, earlier used to partner with ericom for the remote browser isolation capabilities now uh, first point has got their own remote browser isolation uh, technology that is called cyberring now it is called first point rbi earlier it used to be called cyberink rbi so now RBI technology is being integrated with our web security, with our, uh, you know, other cloud solutions to give you a remote browser isolation capability, which is again a zero trust approach to access internet, to access applications where any, any unwanted site or any unwanted destination is people want to access, you can still give them an access, but not a single malicious code or not a single active code will be executed on your local machine. So that's how you increase productivity. And at the same time, make sure the connection is safe between the user and the uh, end destination. So Cyberink has also been a very wonderful uh, integration and acquisitions for us, acquisition for us uh, in this past six months. The recent, the recent uh, acquisitions and the most significant one, uh, which will actually change the overall, uh, you know, portfolio or strengthen the overall portfolio for Force Point is BitGlass. BitGlass, some of you would have already heard about it. But just to give you a clarity, BitGlass is one of the leaders in the cloud security platforms, the Gartner leader in the cloud security platforms for many years. Uh, they provide SSC platform for integrated uh, 
web security integrated uh, CASP, ZTNA technologies on the cloud. We'll be talking about something, some more use cases which BitGlass can provide. And I've tried to capture certain things for you to provide much information on BitGlass. Uh, Bit, BitGlass is now completely acquired by Forcepoint. And uh, uh, we are not working towards the integrations, we are working towards the platform migrations uh, in multiple technologies over BitGlass to leverage these acquisitions completely and fully. So you will see a lot of traction in the coming year from Forcepoint to uh, you know to promote a BitGlass platform for integrations. And the strategy is very simple. We are going to take these technologies, <clears throat> blend these technologies with Forcepoint, uh, flagship data loss uh, prevention solution uh, to integrate with our cloud web security solution, our uh, SASE platform, which we were actually offering uh, till now. We will integrate and best of the two technologies will be provided as a single solution back to your back to our customers who will be opting us in the coming time so akshay ayush uh, just wanted to add one more point to the previous slide it's not only about the acquisition and you rightly mentioned that uh, we are blending it into uh, the existing solution stack to make the best of the two solutions uh, it's how fast we are doing right if you talk about the cyber ring it's not not less than six months right uh, and uh, not no less than six months the acquisition happened and it's fully integrated with our technology stack and uh, if you talk about deep secure and that that way it's happening and bit plus being just a recent acquisition and we are very fast paced uh, to integrate into this solution so it's not only about the acquisition it's how fast we can deliver back to the customers is the key with postman all right yeah. thank you thank you Ayush. so yes uh, definitely uh, uh, the pace is the key how aggressive, uh, how aggressively we will be able to use the technologies is the key. So, as I mentioned, as as Ayush mentioned, RBI and other technologies have already been integrated at a great extent. But Big Class, since it, it is like a one month old baby, uh, still with us. So we are on the on our track to get it integrated as soon as possible with our stack, and uh, give the benefits of the platform. If yes, that customers, if they want to. Uh, use a bit class as a separate component they can still use it from day one but as of, as far as integration with force point products uh, we are working towards it and it will be done asap so uh, the entire focus is to get this integration done uh, in the entire organization now uh, with all of this what we are actually trying to achieve we are trying to achieve uh, a scenario where we'll not talk about only the sase uh, we'll talk about uh, a scenario where uh, we talk about data first sase because data first SAS is something which is which is desirable, which is actually need, which is actually a need of today. We talk about SAS where we talk about access controls, we talk about uh, you know identity management, we talk about application uh, you know security. But generally, we somewhere uh, you know back of our mind, we think that okay, we we getting we are getting all these things, so our data would also be protected. But not uh, you know uh, that, that is not true exactly. So you need a solution which can give you a data centric approach because it, because the data is the crown jewel for you data is something which you need to protect so in a in a force point sase approach we are keeping the data protection at the core at the center of our sase approach so that you will get to know and you will get to uh, you'll get the data loss prevention capabilities along across the channels which we will be using on the sase platform given by force point so it will be end to end so we'll cover this these uh, parts in our uh, coming sessions but yes just to give you an idea, our approach is very clear that we have to keep data-centric SASE approach and we'll providing solutions to customers to, who wants to protect their data wherever the user is, whether they're accessing any applications, internet, internal applications, the data remains protected at all the time. So this is our SASE approach and what we believe is that uh, from a first point SSC perspective, uh, a single endpoint will connect to your web security as a service, which will provide your secure web gateway capability. A threat prevention capabilities on your uh, SSC solution that is secure service edge, which is a uh, sub, uh, sub part of a SASE component. And along with that, you have a data loss prevention capability. And I'm talking about enterprise data loss prevention here. And I'm not talking about any uh, small scale or a light DLP capability. I'm talking about enterprise DLP capability on your cloud security solution. And then a CASB capability on the SSC uh, solution, which stitch together to give you a platform where your people can access internet, your people can access SaaS based apps, uh, IAS through your SSC platform, where your data identity as well as your uh, applications remain securely connected 
from the endpoint and definitely your branches and your headquarters can also connect to this SAP second GRE tunnels for various use cases to achieve. Now at the same time, the other use case which comes in is for your private applications. So your internal hosted applications are also very important. Uh, the the normal uh, the normal uh, in the normal case organization use vpn technologies to connect to their internal applications but yes from a ztna perspective uh, this will actually replace your vpn if you are only using the vpn for connecting the applications okay so your ztna technology will give you a secure access back to your application so your user will not be able to access uh, the entire network the entire scope of the vpn he will only be able to access the app which is supposed to access within the internal network. And at the same time, we will give you an additional threat prevention layer, which will ensure that any sort of uh, malware, any sort of uh, you know malicious code, you will not be transmitting back to your DC or it is not coming to the user machine as well. And with along with the complete data loss prevention capability, which is not given by any VPN at this point in time, they can pro provide you file-based, file type-based file -based protection, but based on the content, that which content you want to protect, that is something which is not uh, intelligently done by the VPN solution. So ZTN is something which is also a SASE approach path component, uh, which will give you a complete uh, connectivity from your users, whether they're working from home or office, or, uh, home or office to your internal apps. So in this way, complete SASE approach, uh, uh, you know, gets completed where you give access to your users from a single endpoint to the internet, SAS-based IAS. Uh, platforms or uh, SaaS applications or your internal applications connected from a single dashboard. So that is where the user, you know, will feel good. They will have better experience, a better connectivity method, and a complete security from end to end, from data pro data uh, data protection to the user protection and application protection. All three important aspects will be covered in this SaaS approach. Now the other factor, which is you know, which which is actually a very a bit differentiator. How do we understand the user is not on risk? We have authenticated the user, we have given him the access, but how do we understand that whether the user is at risk or not? Okay. So the technology which we embed within our SAS approach is DUP. That is called dynamic user protection. So what exactly is DUP? How does it a bit differentiator? So if you talk about DUP, uh, DUP is a technology which comes under the risk adaptive cyber security for force points. So force point strength is giving you a risk adaptive cyber security where we can actually uh, give you a risk adaptive approach where we can quantify the risk exposed by the user and provide an automation towards it. So once we understand the risk, we give you a quantification of that risk and then we can automate things for you. Okay. Automate how? Automate is that once we understand the risk, then we have some actionable intelligence to automate our security controls to ensure that the thing which is going to happen a week after, we can prevent it a week before. How do we do that? Because currently, when I trust the user or when I when I see that user risk is very low, then things are allowed for him. But the moment the risk starts elevating, the moment user behavior changes, the user you know generally logs in at 9 a.m. in the morning, but he suddenly started logging in uh, 6 a.m. or maybe 2 a.m. in the night, which is not right, which, which he has not done in last two years. And he's data stockpiling. He's doing a lot of uploads and trying to transfer data to hard drives or USBs. This is not a normal operation. It is allowed for him because he's a, he's a uh, user which, is trust, which, is, which has a low risk score. But the moment he tries to do these things, his risk score will automatically elevate because of different parameters. I'll discuss about those parameters, but yes, due to different parameters, his risk score will increase. So we have that in actionable intelligence that on what parameters his risk has elevated. And then based on that, the automation can take place from an allow to a complete block mode. So, you know, in the meanwhile, users can have multiple action and restrictions automatically uh, applied on his uh, solutions on the, on the controls, which we can apply on him to ensure that the things which can happen in past or the, you know, uh, the things which the, the accesses which we have given to them on, on the basis of trust uh, will not be exploited by the user because he has not been monitored properly. So we we talk about continuous monitoring, then taking out the risk, risk exposure and then automate things for that user 
uh, on the security component. This, this complete framework actually works on the Carta framework, uh, which has been given by Gartner to uh, continuously assess to continuously continuously assess the users and then uh, do automations on on top of it. So how do we do it? So force point actually monitors users. So you've got that understanding. But as an understanding, force point has a very uh, you know great legacy in providing user activity monitoring solutions. So from last nineteen years, uh, force point has been provided has been providing insider threat technologies. It has been very popular in US federal and uh, in 2016 17 it was allowed to do uh, you know allowed to give it to the commercial market so it is a complete activity monitoring solutions then uh, we added our kitty with the red owl acquisitions back in 2016 17 uh, to give a behavior analytics capability in our portfolio so we had the user activity monitoring experience we also have the uh, analytics experience in our kitty and now we have, you know, converged these two or we have married these two components to give you a complete SaaS based offering called dynamic user protection. So dynamic user protection will give you uh, a complete user activity monitoring plus the analytics on top of it so that you can get that actionable intelligence to work upon and to automate your cybersecurity solutions to apply controls automatically when the user risks elevate. So that is how dynamic user uh, protection has been delivered. And now uh, this dynamic user protection, as I mentioned, it's a complete SaaS based offering, uh, no heavy lifting on the, on the, uh, you know, on the systems or on the infrastructure as of now. So where it is applicable. So we, we need to understand uh, that where actually this DOP or dynamic user protection is applicable and the risk adaptive approach. So today's real, uh, reality is uh, that our approach is very reactive. Okay. Whenever a data loss incident happens or any sort of breach happens, uh, we tend to do a post-mortem of that incident, which is right because we don't know how to do a pre-mortem of that data loss incident. So we eventually do post-mortem. We bring in consultants. We bring in multiple audit authorities to investigate what happens and what went wrong. So ultimately, what the information which we get is uh, the event logs, uh, the user information, the breach details. So whatever information we get, which which uh, which actually has happened in the past so that is something which go into the news if you see that this has gone wrong this has uh, gone right you know the x user has done this activity at this point in time so all these things which have already been done in the past will be recorded uh, in the post mortem analysis and that will become our uh, you know investigative approach and that is completely dependent on the indicators of compromise that what went wrong with did user uh, bypassed any security control? Did user stop any services on the machine? Did user use his personal laptop? Did user use any sort of other mechanism to bypass those security controls? So we actually focus on the indicators of compromise uh, in the reactive approach. But if I talk about uh, in the in the world of proactiveness, in the world of awareness, where we can actually uh, understand and detect the incidents much more prior uh, when the actual harm is going to be done okay so this particular capability is uh, dependent on two important components one is detection the other one is response so the one is uh, one important aspect is mean time to detect and the other important aspect is mean time to respond so these two capabilities actually helps in order to understand that what user is doing and how user is actually working on his machine digitally, what kind of activities he is doing, what types of downloads, uploads, what types of websites, all these things are monitored continuously to understand the risk exposure of that user. And how do we do it? We do it with, uh, you know, with our proprietary IOBs that are, that are called indicators of behaviors. So you see, we are shifting from IOCs to IOBs to ensure that we get, we give you that proactive awareness, that proactive response capability where you can predict a, a breach which is about to happen in future much earlier than it is supposed to happen because of the change in behavior. So any user, any hacker, any you know, malicious insider will not do things overnight unless it is accidental. Okay. He will try to see things in the environment. He will try to do Reiki, try to do multiple things to ensure that no one is looking at him, to ensure no one is you know uh, monitoring him. And then the final breach happens over the period of time. 
So because of IOBs, you can actually detect the change in behavior, the change in access, the change in overall digital experience or digital activities done by that user and uh, collaborate them in a single dashboard and put them across the analytics engine which you provide on the SaaS. How do we do it? So these indicators of behavior generally, uh, you know, bucketized in, uh, you know, multiple buckets like uh, lever, data stockpilers, data exfiltration, data access system modification, etc. So these are, uh, you know, some of the uh, buckets in which we have created the, those IOBs. So we have around 100 plus IOBs currently being done, which is are being uh, done by our data scientists. Our, uh, you know, some uh, psychiatrists, uh, psychologists are also on the panel to give uh, details back to our data scientists to create these IOBs and put them across into our solutions. And these IOBs are generally based on risk impact scores. Okay, so these risk scores starts from zero and goes up to 80. So zero being, just to give you an idea, zero being informational, five being low, 10 being medium, uh, 40 being high and 80 being critical. So these are the risk scores and parameters on which your risk profiling will be done. So if you see these three actions where user have applied on a LinkedIn, uh, anomalous download size and network share and upload to personal cloud. These three activities, if they are done separately, okay, these are harmless. This is a normal operation which a user can do. But if these activities are done sequentially, one after the other, within a particular time window, this could be a disaster because you can see a pattern. You can see a user, uh, you know, doing things based on a pattern where he's applied a job then downloading a lot of data and then uploading it to a personal cloud. So when these things are done sequentially in a network by a user, then you should have a system which can actually flag this kind of a behavior where you will start putting focus on that user being a risky user. So that's how the proactiveness comes into the picture where you will not see things in an isolated manner. The analytics engine will give you that capability where you can collaborate all those incidents and give you a single view of the risk, risk exposed by a particular user in your environment. Okay, so as I mentioned in DUP, uh, with with the help of an user activity monitoring and an analytics engine, we have married the uh, two components to give you an improved converged detection capability, where analytics and visibility both will go hand in hand to give you that complete analysis of what is happening in the organization, to give you that mean kind of detection. Uh, properly before any incident happens and uh, here the cohesiveness also is an important uh, you know component because it's not only the visibility or the detection how we are responding how we are responding back to these uh, risk exposures so currently we have integrated our data loss prevention with our dup component so any any user who is trying to do who, who is misbehaving in the organization or do uh, things which are not authorizer which are harmful for the organization then automatically his dlp policies will start applying restrictive uh, capabilities on him okay so that is one of the important things which i wanted to highlight that we have developed that response or automated response back to our solutions uh, the next step would be that we will enforce this kind of our response capability on our cloud solutions so that if any risk is exposed so these are not iocs these are all iobs based risks exposures which will be given back to our cloud security solutions and the vision is that we will integrate with third-party solutions to give that analysis back to them to orchestrate their uh, you know uh, security controls on the users automatically when the risk uh, risk is elevated for those users so this is our vision currently and uh, you know you can say that we're just starting in the DUP journey uh, going forward okay now uh, you know I talked about I, I talked about a lot about uh, your cloud security, uh, workforce protection applications, uh, a lot about user risks and uh, how automation can help you to, you know, do a product, proactive security assessment in the organization. Now we'll talk about some of the important use cases uh, which comes in. So we have segregated our use case journey in three sections. Uh, I'll talk about some of the important cloud security use cases these days, uh, where I will introduce you with BitClass platform today. Uh, then uh, uh, later, Ayush will come in and Ayush will take care of the data protection, typical data protection on your uh, uh, environment, in your environment and on your users. 
and at the same time he'll also talk about very interesting capabilities regarding the operational technologies uh, which are related to our cdr technology and other uh, capabilities which will be uh, later in the uh, session from the lab and the demo use case perspective so let's get started so one important thing we talked about we talked a lot about visibility we talked a lot about cloud security so the biggest and one of the important components which comes in in everyone's mind that after going to the transformation journey what exactly you know my visibility points are because i started my presentation today with the visibility thing because at the moment we lose the visibility things becomes you know blind we do not see them and since we could not see them we cannot apply controls on them so shadow it visibility has been a great uh, component in any cloud security solution and uh, because you know we give accesses to people people access millions of websites millions of applications across the internet but we do not know what is wrong and what is good so that is something where the overall risk exposure with the shadow it visibility comes in uh, with the cloud security solution and you get to uh, you get integrations with multiple security tools to automate the process of applying security policies at the same time you can also adjust these shadow it controls as per the nature of the business of your organization so i'll just show you the capability how it is done so you can see that this is a build class dashboard where we have uh, you know a, so just to give you an idea i think build class has the largest application database in in the cloud security industry right now we are actually covering around 660000 applications today with the long tail apps and uh, we give you details and we can we give you control zero day control for these applications uh, today and we are increasing these applications day by day so you can still think of the strength and the capability which we are uh, you know for how which we are which, which we are which we are actually focusing on the cloud application security perspective so from a uh, Dropbox perspective, I just want to give you an idea that how we actually categorize an app. So an app, you can actually search in the dashboard. You can see that how this app is rated, what is the categories in which this app is following up, uh, what is the overall domains it is using, okay? And what are the attributes on which this app is actually rated? What if, if its risk score is eight, why this risk score is coming eight? So there are multiple components like compliance certifications where you have COVID, you have HIPAA, you have ITIL, PCI, DSS, a lot of certifications. Then we have security uh, certifications or security controls. What sort of security controls you have on this app where you have different types of uh, scoring. You have encryption, you have, uh, you know, legal, you have multiple components on which or parameters on which this app is rated based on the controls it provides. And based on the overall scoring, an average score is provided back to the uh, cloud applications so that you can understand that what kind of risk this app is posing in my environment. Okay. And based on that, you can take a decision whether I will allow this application in my environment or not. Okay. Now, the other important factor is that you can also change the weightages of these applications. So if you think that PCI DSS is important for you, you can change the weightage of PCI DSS. If HIPAA is important for you, you can change the HIPAA. Or you can see that any security control is having more uh, weightage in your environment. You can change that and based on that changed risk score or the weightage, your overall risk score of the app will also change. So it is completely customizable that how you look at an app would be different based on the nature of business, based on the work you do for your clients, for your customers. So that is completely, you know, uh, changeable in your environment. Okay. Now I'll uh, put you across the other capability in the shadow IT front. This is something which we, you know, the one it's the one is only focused on the app like Dropbox. But how do we see the overall, you know, shadow IT visibility in my environment? So we can integrate by manual efforts, or we can integrate with Syslog Collector. We can integrate with multiple security tools for automation. This uh, shadow IT visibility capability in your environment, because we understand there could be multiple exit paths. So you can use uh, existing vendors which are there in the list, like Forcepoint, like Checkpoint, Proofpoint, your uh, uh, you know Palo Altos. All of those you know vendors are available in the in the list. But you can also select other vendors. You can put your other service providers also uh, to take part in the shadow IT visibility. 
and the, the good thing is that you will get a single dashboard so you can take multiple reports multiple log feeds within the system and you will get a single dashboard for the entire uh, uh, you know environment so you can see that for apollo alto uh, logs feed we we tend to find out that what kind of risk is posing the logs which we have been which which have been fed by the apollo alto in the system so you get the entire detail that what exactly your overall cloud risk assessment how many low trust apps are being discovered which people are accessing how many sources what kind of data upload is happening on those uh, what types of new domains and applications secured within the platform all those things along with that you'll also get to uh, see the applications which are being accessed heavily in the organization so you can see based on apps you can see based on categories that which application categories are being accessed and along with the sources so what all sources have accessed these applications the most and if you want to check you can actually you know uh, drill down in each of the user and see uh, that what you what that user is actually been doing so that user is actually doing on the application front so all these apps are being listed based on the user so you can actually really drill down on each app on each user category wise and you know the entire thing will be visible to you that how exactly uh, the data upload data download how many how much traffic is being forwarded what users which applications are being accessed how many low risk apps high risk apps are being accessed within the environment in the shadow it visibility uh, visibility component given in the bit class platform so what does you know how does it help it helps you to cover that blind spot which was there in your environment which you could not actually you know consolidate which you could not actually see what was going on and with this risk risk exposure or risk assessment report you can control these applications with the same platform or you can integrate this platform with other uh, you know solutions as well to give you security controls now uh, the other important use case which comes in is managed app protection okay managed app protection means the applications which you trust applications like office 365 google suite applications like uh, you know salesforce confluence all these applications are your managed application so the problem is that once we move to saas models the visibility becomes really low we do not know when the user is access accessing the saas app what is doing whether is downloading data uploading data what kind of data is that whether is sharing data across the channel whether is encrypting the data on cloud so we don't have any visibility on on that front and because we don't have visibility we cannot provide controls on that so that is something which is really important for us to have to have complete visibility on our cloud applications so the capability which we will showcase here uh, would be the casp and cloud app control uh, along with that policy granularity for access control complete visibility back to you along with data protection so within this uh, we have a office 365 tenant and uh, we have mapped this office 365 tenant with multiple uh, policies so uh, you can see that there are a lot of policies associated with office 365 where we can have different access methods we can have different device types we can have different locations we can have different applications in web app which we can protect like sharepoint onedrive etc so you can segregate between those and then we have different actions like dlp download upload all those things can also be controlled within this okay so you can see here that we have different dlp controls for different types of parameters like if you are to, uh, talking about ssn then it will be blocked if you have a credit card it will be encrypt if you have a w2 then we have a drm control also available uh, digital rights management on casp an expense report will be allowed so you have different controls for different data types if you are downloading and at the same time for uploading as well on the cloud so these controls are being applied in the policy now we'll quickly go on to the office 365 uh, tenant we we'll log into that and you can see that when we log into that this particular machine doesn't have any agent it is going agentless with the reverse proxy capability you can see in the url uh, it is going via bit glass so now we will try to see that what kind of data we have so we have ssn data available on the cloud we can see that data on cloud on on online transaction but the moment i try to download it you know 
the moment I try to download that data, the data is not there in the file. The data has been blocked because it matches the uh, security policy and the data data protection policy applied on the Bit Glass platform. Now we'll talk about some credit card data. Okay, so we see that we can actually see the file in the online viewer. It's a credit card information, but the time we try to download this data within the credit card, the credit card information should be encrypted. You can see that there's a file which is encrypted and if you open it, it lasts for the password. Okay, so we have an encryption capability where you will definitely, uh, you know, you can use this capability where you want to encrypt the confidential data while downloading from the cloud application so that it cannot be used further. Now we'll talk about, uh, you know, a W2 file where, you know, we'll download it. And this, this is the uh, file which contains the malware. Okay, now we'll download the malware file for the threat prevention. It's not only the data loss prevention, but we also have to look on the threat prevention capabilities within the CASB platform. So once we open that, we can see that, you know, you will not be able to get any content of that file and that file will not be downloaded when the malware uh, is seen on that particular file. So whether it is downloaded, downloading a credit card SSN malware, you can still protect it from your, uh, you know, from those unauthorized download. And at the same time, if we upload anything like a normal cybersecurity component, you can see that, you know, the data is not there. It's completely blocked uh, by the BitLab platform. So not only download, but uploads activities can also be monitored in real time for the users. And based on that, uh, once these activities are done, okay, the notifications can also be sent out to users, to admins, to all these stakeholders to ensure that whatever the activities are being done by the user should be properly reported, properly seen uh, within the system. So this is how you can actually block, upload, uh, download activities with proper policy management based on user location device, uh, the access type and the application type which the user is trying to access over the SaaS based applications. Okay. Now, if I talk about uh, the other use case, which comes in with uh, the zero trust approach is uh, we, we have to then talk about a little bit on uh, ZTNA capabilities. ZTNA zero trust network access control. We've been talking about zero trust for a long time now. And we talked about risk exposure and all those things are also part of zero trust. Zero trust is not one thing. Zero trust is a strategy, is a process. And ZTNA is also part of it. So what ZTNA helps you to do? ZTNA uh, you know, helps you to provide secure access to your private applications, uh, which would be very limited to VPNs in some cases, where you will not have complete visibility of what user is doing on that app. And if you talk about a business view on that, then uh, you know, users definitely will have a unified view of their SaaS apps and internal apps. User will not be able to segregate, which is my internal and external app. It's a dashboard for the user, very, very intuitive, very easily uh, acceptable by the user, a good user experience, I would say in overall. And you can still give a threat prevention and data production capabilities on that particular platform. How do we do it? Let's say it. So if I talk about uh, the dashboard perspective, so you can see that my policies for my SaaS app and my, for my internal apps will be on the same page. So I can create policies for my internal and for external apps. So you can see I have taken Splunk as an internal app. In this case, it is it is being, uh, you know, it is an HTTP service or HTTP app, and it's it's working on port 8000 8, 8, internally. So what I've done is uh, I integrated this app with my platform, with my BitGlass platform on the cloud. And with this, the user will, uh, you know, we have allowed user to access this application from currently from any group, any device, but we can actually check and we, we can actually provide group based access, user based access that which user, which group will be accessing internal app and which app. And the similarly, we can also provide DLP controls for upload and download data on those specific applications. So you can change the based on, you can change the DLP actions based on the type of data, uh, data, which you want to protect from download or upload. Now let's go to the platform. So there will be a single platform for all your application from a user perspective. So user will log in into this platform here. Okay. So user will try to log in within this platform 
and you can see that all those applications you can see google workspace dropbox slack jive all those applications along with the internal app will be visible back to the user you can also integrate this with a single sign on uh, currently in this demo we couldn't have a single sign on enabled so user has to log in again with this plunk internal app but yes you can definitely have uh, you can enable a single sign on on this plunk app so that user will not be able to uh, you know put or you will not be putting their credentials again so you see that the moment i access my internal app it opens uh, in a in a browser with a secure connectivity through the bridglass platform you can see in the url of bridglass platform through reverse proxy connection it is being established within my internal app and i can do whatever i want i can you know see reports i can do my analysis on this on this particular uh, uh, application now on this i've also put it uh, i've also put across uh, some dlp control so now i'll try to download a pdf the moment i try to download a pdf because i have not allowed uh, that pdf or any sort of data download activity from this app this particular thing should be blocked by the controls which we have put across on the bit glass platform so you can see the moment we try to download any activity the ztna acceptable use policy pop up will be coming back to the user which says that you are not authorized actually to download this data on the bitglass through the bitglass platform for this particular application so this is something which you know uh, very very important when it comes to private apps because the risk is equal on your private and internal app and risk is not only on the threat side risk is on the data side risk is on the channel side so all those flexibilities and controls should be provided in the platform to give you that seamless experience for the admins as well as seamless experience for your users to access internal as well as external apps to uh, have secure connectivity and data protection at the same time uh, with this uh, i will rest my discussion and uh, i'll take a pause before my colleagues will start the quiz so i hope uh, my conversation with you was fruitful and you understood the uh, understood the concept of risk adaptive security and cloud security and understood what use cases we tried to demonstrate to you now we'll be having a quiz uh, my colleague uh, jagdish will be taking out the quiz for you so we all request you to go to https kahoot it so this quiz will be having the questions related to my session which i explained to you and uh, you may need to answer them fast so jagdish uh, you can take forward i'll just stop sharing my screen and uh, jagdish can take forward from here Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Akshay. Quite an insightful session so far. So let me quickly share my screen. Just a minute. Just give me a second. Uh, Slowly. Yeah. So hope uh, you're able to see my screen. So I will be uh, starting with this quiz. Uh, as so most of you would be aware of this platform called Kahoot. So you, know, uh, you will be able to see the questions on, on, my, on the screen and uh, you'll have to answer it on your cell phones. You can, can uh, log into the website kahoot.it and uh, just enter the number that you can see here. Is screen visible, Ayush, uh, everyone? Please confirm if, you're, if the screen is visible yeah. to everyone. Uh, not that uh, Jagdish, I guess you, your screen is not visible to us. Oh, okay. Okay. Just give me a second.
Okay, so I'll probably need a couple of minutes to set it up. So meanwhile, you, you just carry on, then uh, I will quickly set it up and come back. I wish if that sounds okay. Okay. Cool. Ayush? Yep. I'm audible. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So thanks, Akshay. And uh, apologies to all the attendees that will have a quiz in a few minutes from now. Okay. But be patient with us. We will all, all be seeing those lovely questions coming up. And everything would be coming from the session that has been discussed by Akshay till now. Okay. Now, we have discussed about risk protective uh, approach, right? So how, how do we really do that? And how does it really look at the console side of it? How, how, how we can make sure how the configuration looks like and everything? Let's do some demo. Okay. Let me know once my screen is visible to you. Okay. Just a show of hand if my screen is visible. Is it visible now? Akshay, can you hear, uh, see my screen now? Just someone can say. Yeah, it's visible. Okay. So now we will be talking about unified threat protection with risk adaptive protection approach. Okay. So we have been discussing about channels. Akshay uh, talked about cloud, but it's not only about cloud. It's very, very important uh, about the different channels as well. When we talk about network, we talk about endpoints, we talk about the email channel, which covers your uh, the traffic which is moving over your email, the traffic which is getting uploaded to the web, along with the data which is residing on your endpoints, right? So Forcepoint has a very comprehensive data protection solution which covers all the channels and not only all the channels, but also from a single unified uh, console so that your DLP overall policies can be be positioned or can be captured on a single place and you get a single visibility around it okay so as far as first point dlp is concerned this is a high level summary of the dlp functionalities uh, and a key differentiators from our competitors i have not captured everything not possible it's a huge list but we have tried to capture some of the important differentiators and important use cases that customers today want to like drip DLP, native encrypt, uh, encryption and the remediation part of it, fingerprinting, email workflow, right? That is that really is important when you talk about large setups. Then uh, it's not only about uh, the use case, a uh, specific uh, action that needs to be taken, but it's also about unified data coverage. So we uh, do it along with the unified policy enforcement, single console, cloud apps, whether the user is in the network, outside the network, we talk about behavior analytics, right? We, we have native behavior analytics uh, inbuilt into our uh, systems. We can create policies which can uh, be dynamic in nature, okay? No, not only static, but also in uh, dynamic in nature based on the user activities and the risk levels. We would be seeing that uh, as a part of the demo. And then automated ecosystem, right? So automation is the key and we are very uh, happy to announce that with our latest release of DLP, we have opened up the APIs as well, okay? So you, we, we are coming with your APIs as well, so you can leverage all the existing customers and the new customers will be getting that. So now with that, le let me come to a use case, okay? A use case which is of intentional data theft, okay? A malicious user. How do we really understand or catch hold of a user who is like intentionally trying to leak a data? There could be an unintentional data leakage attempts where the user is not even aware that he could be doing some kind of a, an activity which can result in accident data loss but importantly is we also need to understand certain users intention when they're copying the data when they're moving certain data in and out of the organization so uh, in order to do that we have a uh, i would say a lab i'll show and what business value or the uh, capabilities that would be uh, covered right i talked about differentiators yeah, we talked about drip dlp yeah. Uh, there's a very important feature of employee coaching where users should come to know, right? We should be guiding the users that what is right, what is not right. The one way of doing is that prompting them to uh, answer certain questions, whether they're doing for the uh, right reasons or not, right? How we can uh, make sure the print can be detected, how we can uh, make sure that uh, the data which is getting copied to mass storage should have a visibility into our console and uh, also about the endpoint discovery. Okay, so for this particular use case, allow me, let me go to my lab. I'll 
uh, and this is my lab okay uh, let me show you the my lab infrastructure first to you so this is the lab okay we have built a, a platform for all uh, for uh, doing demos and the POCs and for sessions like this it's an uh, full-fledged labs and in last couple of years when the pandemic hit uh, it was merely not possible to do POCs and the demos right uh, doing it on site this platform of force point okay it is one of the platforms where you can do every possible thing and we have done I would say pretty huge POCs and the demos using this platform itself for the customers okay so let, let me come to directly onto the use case this is one of my windows machine on my uh, which is my corporate asset and on which my dlp is running okay L let's do a, a use case okay the first use case is how do we really identify an intentional user which is trying to exploit data okay the so first let's try to see if this is a, a software development organization they have their own codes and here's a user who's trying to upload a code which is of a corporate code right while writing a software on a url that is dlp test it could be any url where you're trying to upload con content okay let's try and see what happens let me try and upload a confidential code a python script okay and click submit okay it was a privileged user it was allowed to do it absolutely fine it got uploaded okay but till now we are not here talking about whether it should be allowed whether it should not be allowed right let's uh, see the user's next activity now he's trying to copy that same code okay or he's trying to send that particular code back onto a usb personal usb okay that's allowed okay and but here he has been prompted okay to mention the reason why he is copying that because it's a, a confidential or a company sensitive information so let's say he said acceptable operation right or may, maybe and give a certain justification right the moment he gives that justification then say allow if he does not click allow within the stipulated time it gets auto block let me say it allow okay so now over here this content has been moved but till now it was allowed for the user employee coaching was done everything but now we need to really understand what if the user is not not exhibiting the correct behavior we need to block as well and we need to get a visibility around the organization right so let me try to print this particular document okay just a name and now you would see this was blocked okay it's not only about blocking this okay or uh, it's also about giving a visibility now let me go back to my first point security manager so first point security manager is a unified console that we talked about right so let me log in into that so this is the console in which we log in this is a dashboard which comes it, it's a very uh, the landing page is very intuitive for you it gives you a lot of visibility what are the health alerts what are the business uh, value in terms of the data which is getting collected all the uh, all the data or the incidents which have been captured what the top five policies which are getting uh, uh, i would say breached right and then also overall all discovery incidents we would be seeing the demo for that as well right but let me go to the incident the incident that just happened right let's see what what really happened so you can see that this particular incident uh, was generated a blocked event where he was trying to print a confidential information a source code of the organization and not only that but we also found a cumulative rule which said that three incidents were found similar to this uh, even when they were permitted, the force point DLP is making a track of that, right? Because tomorrow, if you come to know that there was a, a sensitive information being leaked, we require to know what, what other times he tried to send, right? And not only this, uh, we can also go to the forensic part and see what was the exact file that was being printed or what has been said. And if I click on the properties, you will see the entire uh, uh, details about the incident, when it happened, what was the, uh, even if it is assigned, we can assign this to certain users, delegate admins, what was the source, what was the attachment, you get every possible detail around this. Okay, so that's the first use case of uh, data protection for us, where we have been protecting uh, the, I would say, uh, Python code, okay, a security code, 
and uh, there was an intentional data theft okay we covered uh, like drip dlp which is like slow data leakage over a period of time we identified that the data leakage happened at various different channels and we were able to uh, capture it right so that's the dlp we saw that uh, prompt coming in that is endpoint coaching we use a thick application and then print uh, application to copy that uh, print that particular data and we saw that the data was being captured uh, when moving to uh, mass storage it was prompted and endpoint discovery we'll see okay we, we we can run that endpoint discovery as well next is very prominent today most of our customers today talking about when my users were sitting inside right i was okay but now when my users are sitting at home like we are today sitting and uh, i i recall the very first or second slide where akshay showed a, a person sitting in his bedroom and working right so how how do we really make sure the roaming users are getting protected right so we we would be trying to protect a fingerprinted document okay which is a structured data okay and we would be understanding what are the capabilities within the solution which would be able to prevent uh, fingerprinted data being lost okay before it being lost and also giving you the visibility okay so let me again go back to my uh, slide uh, to my lab the very first thing let me do is go to my gns and let me remove this connectivity right this means this machine is now either the internet is not working or this particular person is sitting at home right it is not connected to the corporate network so now if i go to the same machine uh, let me open the so you will, the moment it gets updated you will see in a few fraction of seconds that earlier is showing connected it will move to disconnected state okay now you can see it has moved to disconnected state now if the user this is my pii information okay a sensitive information that uh, that was there and he was to, uh, he captured it in a pd uh, in a notepad and now he is trying to print uh, sorry uh, send it to usb right that's the channel when he is sitting at home he can do right on a laptop let's see what happens the moment he is trying to do that okay over here you can see the date the corporate information the data will be encrypted so force point provides inbuilt capability of encryption okay uh, when being uh, used uh, maybe for the remote media okay we are not encrypting the usual media as such because that's not what the customers want to do because as an organization you are worried about your confidential data right so how how we can make sure that the data which is being copied even with uh, in, by uh, if you want to make sure that the data is being allowed but it, the data should be protected from an accidental loss of a usb right if it is encrypted by a password or a profile key we offer two types of encryption in that we can protect the uh, Uh, the data even if the usb is lost so now let me do one quick thing let me bring that machine back into the network okay i'm not sure if there's a small lag in this but let me know if it's visible back to you okay now if i update you will be able to see the machine is again connected in a fraction of second here you go it's connected now let me see what what was being shown in my incidents okay so over here you can see a db fingerprinting policy which was having a very confidential data like uh, all your uh, pi information right which was being protected uh, in terms of being encrypted by in the usb uh, and the data has been now make sure that if it is someone else get that usb will not be able to read through that data as well and we offer two types of encryption as i told you and even if i go scroll down you will be able to see all the details like i showed earlier right the complete forensic and everything and it also tells you what where it was being done and all those details are coming okay. that's the second use case that i wanted to talk to you about today for a roaming user protection and, and this is a very prevalent uh, use case which most of our customers today are asking right so we understood this next comes protecting pi information on the email channel okay and when we talk about email channel it's a uh, one of the biggest way through which the most of the data loss are happening so how does postpoint unique technologies helps you to protect that okay 
it's not only about the capability of protecting the content uh, which is in the form of a uh, readable format what's if uh, a user copied a confidential data converted into an image format and then not and tries to send it outside right so you require a technology called ocr optical character recognition to make that image into a textual format in order to read that and force point offers that from a long long time and not only that but also set up a email workflow and make sure that if there is an email being sent to competitor for example i'll show you in the use case how we can detect and set up a workflow where there is an accountability created not only for the user but also maybe for this department head or maybe his manager unless under his approval the mails will not flow through and let, let's see how it happens in the lab okay so let me do one thing um, let's go to a domain okay let's log in into a mailbox okay let's try to send some information okay let's send a new email let me attach this is an image which is a database okay database uh, data that we have captured in an image format and we will see what really happens what is this exact content right now you're not seeing that but i'll show you in the forensic part okay and it gets attached let me say uh, x y z right right so so that no system thinks it's any normal email let me send it to post my i used to put me and add to it for Com and click send let's see what happens let me go to my there's reporting the incident management and here you see there's an email which was being sent by barbara jones to uh, to destination ayush by using network email channel and the email has got quarantine now this is interesting why over here you would be able to see multiple policies being gathered being uh, shown that there is an email to competitor because we have set up in that way you can also set up for your to your set of customers you can see there are a lot of phone number information is going and getting exchanged which is not allowed to be shared then you also see a fingerprinting data which has a lot of pi information which is being fingerprinted right so and over here you can see that particular image right so now what to do if it is a genuine request okay a manager would have received an email stating whether do you what, what do you want to do this uh, what, what do you want to uh, whether you want to allow it whether you want to block it let me log log into his manager let's first see who is the manager so over here also it shows you right who, who was the manager so this is all coming from integration with the identity sets and everything because when we set up set this up we integrate right so william is the uh, manager let me go to his mailbox and see what william has received okay one to three password okay here comes an email okay from a dlp system mailbox stating that th this is the original message that i shares barbara has forwarded and it gives you all the, you can see the subject line i would have if i would have mentioned any text uh, in the mail body it would have come but you, here you can see every possible details are coming okay and it also mentions to whom i was sending what was the exact attachment what were the rules that are getting triggered right now it's up to his manager to really, uh, allow this particular email to or not okay and it's not something that he has to log in into the console and do and all those stuff post point dlp it's all about flexibility right with making the productivity go high so he mentions only from here okay approved okay and he sends an email okay so now let's see what happens let me go and refresh Oh, wow, mail is released. It's that simple, right? And it's not only that, but over here, you can also go to history and see what was the sequence of events. It was detected and recorded, okay? As I mentioned, everything needs to be uh, made accountable, right? You need to 
have those notifications to whom all the notification was sent right it was william and we have set up one more id to whom the notification was sent and then you can see it was approved and released by this manager so it also builds in accountability and if you go to forensics you get all the details around that complete property details right and this competitor all the all the your all the policies that we have created are getting matched it's a single incident multiple policies getting breached we are not creating four different incidents unlike a traditional dlp systems which you use to do that one incident multiple policies showing as a single click to you okay so now we have uh, understood one more important use case right how, how we are making sure it when it comes to protecting information or pi information by the help of on the email channel when it's in the form of image intelligent users right and how do we really protect the emails being sent to competitors right so that that's that's a uh, another use case for you now let's understand next use case and i i guess someone even in the chat was asking to me when akshay was presenting what kind of discovery that you always offer we offer two types of discovery one is the network layer discovery we'll be talking about that right now another is the endpoint discovery as well on the endpoint we can run endpoint task and we can identify that particular content which you want to identify maybe on hundreds or thousands of machines running across your network right so now let's understand so we are trying to discover personal information right and then copying it to different locations how we can it's not only about identification or identifying and discovering that particular content right but what next it's also about remediation right so we will here talk about network discovery i'll show you the use case we would be Namely, right now doing only the discovery part of it because in the interest of time we may not have that much time to do remediation but let me do a discovery we will go to policy management we'll go to policy uh, discovery policy and we will run over here you can see we have endpoint discovery task and network task uh, network discovery task so let me go to network discovery task uh, just to show you how it looks like i just started a discovery for source code discovery okay and let me do it for signed pdf documents as well okay by the time this is running let me go to my reporting section discovery and see incident what happened so over here you can see okay this is running in gmt time zone so the time you can see which is coming over here is matching the time right just now we did the discovery and you can see the discovery that has happened and how it happened it also gives you the complete uh, uh system through which it has done you can see the last two incident files and being detected over here right and then if i go to properties you can see what was the path when it was created last modified the checksum value last access date folder permission read write incident details what was the crawler through which we did it right so it gives you a very granular information right and then you can uh, right now it's set to no action you can do and remediate as well okay so till now we have talked about okay all the static policies right while it's very much required but what next right as we talked and nakshay has been talking greatly about it how we can move less to, uh, left of loss right so let's understand what is the next use case uh, the next use case is understanding user risk and applying dynamic policies okay H how do we do that okay by the help of iobs and i don't want to get into details of iobs akshay has talked enough about them definitely if you have more questions we can uh, connect offline i've shared the details of both of us you can rest but what are the capabilities that we are talking about here okay it's a dynamic user protection it's more focus towards user activity monitoring and how we can put adaptive okay adaptive capability to protect data okay so now let's understand uh, what does really happens okay okay let me wait so that's so there is a continuous monitoring that is happening of the user right continuous risk scores and everything you are seeing so what happens you over here if you see there is a risk adaptive policies right we talked about uh, an upload uh, maybe it's a irrespective of the risk levels okay uh, but now we are talking about if there is an upload which is happening on a personal cloud okay based on the uh, risk levels the actions would change automatically 
okay there is no involvement of it to do that for you one set everything happens automated right it's all about automation these days once the risk is on uh, risk one or two it's only audit okay risk level moves to three throw a confirmation dialog box the way i showed you in the one of the use case and then risk four block all risk five block all or even in the uh, next you can see risk adaptive protection audit confirm feature encrypt block block so this is how we are moving into risk adaptive policies where you do not need to worry about what is the policy set a static policy that is being set the moment the risk of that particular user with respect to the organization is changing someone asked that question in the chat as well from me that is it organization wide uh, risk levels yes it's organization wide levels we can, you can do multiple uh, combination of that over there so now let's understand what happens next day one okay what happens there is a user who is having an access to a file share confidential file uh, some information of electric vehicle right some specs or strategies he copied that from a network share back onto his personal machine the moment he did this his risk score moved from 0 to 40 now what he does next uh, we will understand he renamed thinking that no one will be able to detect that he renamed it to college fund uh, and now moved it to his personal documents so that no one able to get detected now there's a zoom which is going on and over there there's a most confidential information uh, of the design document of the electric vehicle and he takes a snapshot okay via snipping tool okay and thinking no one is detecting no it's not like that when you have force point in your network force point is uh, agents are continuously looking as an eye on your machine as to what what's really happening now he, he saved that particular document and he's now trying to upload that particular file on his personal cloud storage okay he, now i told you in the example right it will be prompted for employee coaching because the risk is changing based on the risk the, the actions are changing automatically you saw that it moved from 0 to 40 from 40 to 46 right now with day two we are on 46 let's see what happens now he is looking for certain uh, his uh, CV again okay? and now he's trying to send it that particular CV to someone okay he attaches that CV and he also mentioned uh, he's not happy right because the content it was mentioned he was not happy he was being overloaded he was not considered for promotion and everything and he was sharing his CV now he is opened uh, indeed.com which is a job site he is trying to uh, apply uh, through that uh, to a different organization to see if he, if he wants to move all of that but the job that he has already done is try to copy certain confidential data and going forward we will see that the risk has now moved from 46 to 49 uh, because we have identified these type of activities day three what happens same thing which was allowed for him earlier right we'll see what happens now now he is trying to copy that college fund into his usb and that action has been encrypted we saw that in the us now but the risk is continuously changing right while it was encrypted he will not be able to use it outside that usb now let's see what happens next day four he is trying to copy that research document okay and it is blocked because the score has reached 89 everything is automated we are continuously monitoring now you can see everything which was allowed for him earlier is because he was a privileged user but because of his activities a change in his behavior we are continuously monitoring everything is getting blocked right and it's all happening automated you don't need to do anything and this is how it comes in the console you can see the amount of incidents and everything which is coming okay so i hope that makes sense and that that is really the need of the hour today okay so now let's shift our gears sorry from data protection to ot networks okay actually through a very small light on that in his discussion but we will get into details of what is ot networks and more importantly uh with industry 4.0 revolution which is coming which has come and uh, the convergence is more important the communication between it and ot is must otherwise you will not be able to boost the productivities you will not be have the best of breed things in your networks and if 
you even if you want to keep them separate then also there should be a communication mechanism which should automate the entire process and today where the industry and if you talk about specifically our country we, we we are not in that position where where we are moving into that automation but industry 4.0 is demanding that from us right so force point solutions is not only about sassy it's all uh, the concept of zero trust okay is something which lies across not only the it framework but also more importantly in ot framework right how we can have a zero trust approach when there's a convergence when there's a communication when there's a data movement data movement traffic movement whatever you want to term it as it should be zero trust and everything should be uh, checked whatever is passing through and how does force point can help you in that let's see so let's understand a use case i'll not get into product details but let's understand from a use case data reduction while the data is moving from different networks it could be from intranet to internet or vice versa from internet to intranet or it could be from any high network okay to a low network or vice versa okay it needs to be i would say intercepted and how do we intercept with we do it using force point data guard solution which is a very advanced form of data diodes many of you would have heard about this term data diode but let's understand what, what is data guard we are way ahead uh, when it comes to data guard okay what is the use case use case is how we can make sure that the cap whenever there is a transaction happening between uh, the networks there should be a file drop mechanism we will understand what is file drop file sanitization redaction masking of sensitive information and more importantly how we can make sure in critical infrastructure we can we do not want any kind of unnecessary commands to be uh, to be pushed uh, at any point of time right how we can make sure that certain commands can be blocked on the fly okay so let's uh, see a demo okay so the first uh, demo that we were we, we will be talking here today about would be file drop capability okay uh, so this is uh, this is a gray log through which we see all the logs but coming on to the uh, use case directly this is a machine through which you want to send a good file okay a good file to another side of the network we copy it and it moves automated we are just going the, the background process okay to show you how the good files is being moved with no issues and why there was no issue we will tell you that as well because we were able to identify that there were the protocol validations and everything was okay there was the formatting was all valid nothing changed okay no um, validation was wrong nothing but in the next use case the moment there is another file okay let's see Mm, sorry. So there's another file. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, go work like that. So log detected. Sorry. Yeah. So now there's a bad file which was copied. Okay. And it didn't move through because we will not never let a bad file to move because we identified the format check field. And this is something which we do at a very granular level. Okay, it is not a job of any firewalls or any security solutions which are there today to do that. Okay, this is five of features that we provide. Now let's understand document sanitization using Glassfall, and uh, this is nothing but a CDR functionality which we we talked about, Akshay talked about, and uh, which comes from this point now directly. There's multiple. Uh, content which is dynamic in nature in a pdf file but we do not want that when it is moving to my sensitive network okay when i am moving to that it automatically removes and sanitizes this particular file to make it into a uh, read only file and it's a completely new constructed file you can over here see there's no active links every file does not uh, is no longer fillable or doesn't and has a watermark on the top if you see it says fdg's filtered right so that's how you can make sure that the uh, file which is being moved from an uh, not a trusted network to a trusted network is always being trusted by the help of first point data guard solution okay so this is the second use case of sanitization now let's understand the xml capabilities uh, xml capabilities basically means how we can mask certain information okay this xml contained a price list okay price information and had a confirmation okay and, and had a comment basically 
and what what we need is that everything should go through except the price information and the comment okay and this is all being written in a very simple eula language okay now you see the po which is more moved from this side to another side if i open that uh, you will see in the xml the price information would be masked here you see masked or you can even make it zero right so the comment has also been removed so that's how force point data guard helps you to mask or redact certain informations from a confidential documents in this scenario we talked about a po copy which was in the form of xml we saw the backend command code of it okay and on the on the gray, gray log you can see all the details reflects what all attributes were there what were changed and with uh, force point uh, centralized manager for data guard which is coming in jan come here uh, you, you would be doing all the configurations from a GUI for this particular product. You need not to go to CLI and all those stuff. Now let's understand SS admin capability, right? What, what uh, really happens when you want to have uh, documents, okay? Or you want to make sure that you have two different outbox ready to transmit certain data, or you have a simple example could be demonstrating a file which needs to be reacted with certain information. Could be a Cisco router file where you want to submit it to a technical support of Cisco, right? Or for any vendor, right? You have a router, you want to submit it. You're facing some challenge. You want to remove certain information because it has very confidential information like host name, the password, the domain name, the IP address. You want them to be masked, okay? And on the fly, automatically, people are doing this job today, but it is all manual and prone to mistakes, right? With Forcepoint Data Guide, you can automate this entire process. And if you open it on the other side, you will see that particular information all has been masked. IP has been masked, then your uh, host name has been masked, your secret key that was there, that has been masked. So everything is getting domain name is masked. So this all happens automated. You, once you have set up this, it all happens automatically. You need not to worry about what's really going on, right? So with this, uh, you have understood that very sensitive information that is getting passed through is also getting masked. And, and it's a very open tool. You can do any functionality that you want to achieve out of it, right? These are some of the functionalities with the, what we are seeing today right now. Next, Ned, uh, talked about a video camera, okay? I'll tell you, I'll explain you this particular use case because it's very important. Let's say this is a very, uh, uh, it's a sen very sensitive location. Let's say it's a plant, a manufacturing plant, okay, where you're in and out of uh, your material is happening and a small deviation in this can uh, make that uh, someone move certain uh, important uh, item out of the factory or the plant. And you want to make sure that no one changes the camera positioning, right? from a command from uh, from a command center so with force point data card what you can do is you can block these camera feeds to change the directions okay right now you can see uh, if i click uh, you can control the camera feeds right you can move it you can share it but with data card i'll quickly move uh, you let me show you now if someone tries to click on the changing the camera uh, locations uh, over here we have made a command saying that you will not be able to allow to change any kind of uh, uh, pass through certain, certain specific commands it's not only complete but maybe specific commands you want to uh, make sure that doesn't pass through right you can make sure that tilt option or the zoom, uh, zoom in zoom out things do not work and if that happens you can over here see once someone tries to do that automatically it will start prompting that these requests cannot pass through right so that that's another use case and believe me we are, we are talking about manufacturing we are talking about many other verticals the scada projects and everything uh, this product is really something which most of the customers today are talking about right and they they want this people do not know the terms but this is what people require uh, in their ot framework uh, as on date okay and even the, this solution is being used by many defense organizations across the globe and many very soon, hopefully, first point, uh, India defense organization would also be start using this, okay? So uh, we understood with the file drop capability. I, in the interest of time, I have one more use case, but I'll not show that, but I'll simply share, tell you, let's say this is a document, okay? If you are coming from a hospital and patient records are there, 
and you want to share those patient records with some authority but you need to make sure that their patient id their important information right cannot be shared with anyone so how we can make sure on the fly all those things can be masked so and this is another use case of uh, just data guard how you can make sure to mask over here you can see all these medical informations and all those things are coming i'll quickly move the uh, video okay on the other side if i open this particular document okay uh, sorry so over here if you see if i open this document everything is getting masked okay so this is one more use case so let's move on to the next slide so how does a critical information movement in different networks can be controlled right one good example is also from airspace radar systems how we can make sure that the informations which are being passed on right from our radar systems we can control them right so example is that within the airspace management or tracking systems we can limit the information that flows from one network to another and let's see how it happens so this is the high side of the network you are seeing four uh, planes coming and you're getting certain radar information statics coming from those planes but you do not want right that the other people or maybe to see those informations that there are four planes coming so if you want to restrict that information moving from one location uh, from high, one side of the network to the another side of the network uh, let me move this video a little fast we can expel uh, we can stop that was a configuration in between i just passed it but the important thing i wanted to show on the low side over, over you can only see these two play, uh, radar systems getting you know, these two planes getting tracked by the help of radar system in the previous when it was on high side you can say there were total of four so that's how you can control the information that is moving from one side of the network to another side of the network okay so that's it that i wanted to cover i tried to cover a little fast because i was thinking we, we may lose on the time and i don't want it to steal the thunder right of our quiz okay and these are the coordinates for both uh, akshay and me i printed in the chat as well and uh, you can reach out to both of us or to our marketing team uh, via jagdish who would be now taking us through quest time move to cohort.id right so let me stop sharing Oops, sorry so if i can request uh jagdish to come on stage and we can start the quiz i hope the session was uh, informative and you like the technologies we were not able to cover all the technologies but uh, yes i have tried uh, we have tried to cover most of them we have another technology set of technologies in uh, cross domain sections like this and also things we also have uh, next generation firewalls and as well as sd wan right dedicated ips solutions so we cannot cover everything right in a session so, uh, but we have feel free to uh, go to forcepoint.com and reach out to us jagdish if you can come on to uh, the stage and uh, start the quiz jagdish you are there keep the questions coming in the chat we, or you can reach out to me and akshay on our mail ids and we would be happy to assist you jagdish you are there So actually, if you want to add something or if you want to say something, I guess we, uh, if you want to add something uh, from your side, from a OT technology perspective, it would be nice. Otherwise, we'll not let uh, our OT technology come in between our quiz, right? And just to let you know, the quiz is very crucial. The time is the crash. The faster you respond, the better are the chances of you winning right plus the pace right as i 
uh, highlighted in the between as well when Akshay was presenting about our acquisitions of CyberRing, BitLars, and Deep Secure, a pace at which we are innovating and adding them into the portfolio, innovating them and putting them, uh, putting them onto the uh, into the portfolio and bring it back to the customers, right? So pace is the key. Feel uh, have uh, faster you respond, the better are the chances of you winning. I guess there's a small delay that we are facing with the system, but sooner or later, I guess. So yes, Gaurav, we will be telling you as to how how the quiz would be played. Jagdi should be sharing all the details around that. Just bear with us. Yeah, yeah, please stay with us uh, for a couple of minutes. I think uh, there's some technical problem uh, which has been observed. Yeah. So Akshay, by the way. We all, we all are technical people, so we know that these technical yeah. things can come in meeting. So uh, we apologize for that. But yes, uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, you know you can put across your questions in the Q and A chat. We can answer them. Uh, some of the important questions which I would like to take is regarding discovery. Uh, Postman network discovery is one component which can help you to take out information from uh, your networks, from your file servers, from your uh, you know databases, whatever you have. So from that, from there, you can actually take out data, the crucial information, understand what is there. So whether it is a GDPR information and in India PII, US PII, uh, you know, all your compliances. Apart from that, if you want to uh, take out any confidential information, your custom information, fingerprinted information, also you want to take out. Uh, from there, you can also uh, search with the network discovery. Uh, just giving you an use case of network discovery here uh, on a file on an FTP server. Generally, we keep data, and uh, once the user keeps data, they forget about that data after keeping it. But that data can be exposed because it's an external facing server. So you can take help from network discovery where you can discover the data on FTP server. And uh, if it is older than a particular time, then you can remove it or quarantine or copy that data to a safer location. So that's how the network discovery will work. And that data you can identify based on data for data type, uh, file type, and you can also put across metadata information like uh, when the file was created, owner of the file, all those things can be put across in the policy to capture the accurate information. The other questions, uh, uh, the other question was regarding the zero trust security model in cloud. And, uh, that's something which I explained that zero trust is a process. So in, in, in a cloud uh, scenario, when you talk about uh, a ZTNA, then definitely you have a capability where you can do identification and authentication of your users. Any unauthorized access happening on the cloud apps uh, will not uh, be, will not be provisioned for the user. At the same time, if you talk about your internal apps hosted on AWS Azure on any IAS platform or your internal DCs, that can also be handled by the zero trust network access. And this all will be done in conjunction of your DUP capabilities where you can actually check out risk scores pertaining to other different activities which are happening from the user's end to understand the overall risk from that user. So that is something which we can do. Uh, any other question which you guys would like to ask us? Actually, I, I want to just want to emphasize on one point here that it's not only about cloud. So uh, we we have been asked by many question customers that is it only about cloud? No. So Force Point is the one of the only organization which talks about how it should be from on-prem to cloud and in between it's a hybrid model, right? And today is most of the organizations need the hybrid model. Right, the postpart is the only organization that offers that blend of security solutions, which starts from on prem to hybrid to pure play cloud, and even we talked about today OT, which is on the physical form factor solutions, and which can also be hosted in any private cloud. Uh, it's not like that, but uh, postpart is the only solution which is cutting across all the length and breadth of the uh, network, starting from endpoint to cloud, and as well as, as well as the physical security part to control the data movement into the OT networks and the convergence is the key and I guess now we have uh, 
uh, Jagdish on the on the session. So over to you, Jagdish. Jagdish, can you hear? So guys, you need to go to kahoot.it and there you have to put this pin to enter the game and you have to provide your full name and uh, that will help you out to, you know, play the game. So quickly move to that particular uh, URL. The move. Now we have started to see people moving. We have four people. We have a lot of take away, uh, gifts to give. So, but the, only to the answers which are yeah, correct. Please, please I would, please I would request. Me. Yeah, I would request if you can please put your complete names because there would be people from uh, uh, same name. Request you to put full names and uh, so that. It doesn't create some confusion until later. Be quick, guys. We, we are shun, uh, running short of time. Please put your full names, people. It will help us to identify you properly. Uh, person with NKG, please request you to put your proper name, please. Durai, please put your full name. So we have 12 participants. Guys, please be quick to come on this link. Very quickly, we will make, wait for another couple of minutes and then we will start uh, the quest. So you have to, un you have to look at the screen and uh, answer it uh, on your mobile phones. Okay, you can see the questions here. And uh, S. Kumar, please put your full name. And Ashwari, please put your full name. I'll be real quick. Uh, yep. Actually, I think so. We have 15 participants. Can we start? I think we should start. Yep. Yeah. So, I guess Sandeep has to come back and start. Uh, Sandeep, can you put the uh, start the questions? Okay, here we go. The first question comes on the screen now. So we have five questions. Let's see who is the winner. So first point has been involved in the acquisition of which of the following two? Guys, be quick. There's a timer which is going on. You can see the faster you respond, the better the chances of you winning with the correct answer. 
Okay then. So we have got ten right. Uh, so we have got ten and six. Six people getting it right. It's a common, I guess, multiple people. So cybering and the bit loss for the ones. Let's see who is leading the table. Oh, great, RF. Sure. Uh, all the participants will win. Next question, please. What technologies? Is this a repeat question? Oh, technology, sorry. Uh, which technologies postman has recently acquired? See, I myself got confused. So be, be very attentive when you're answering, right? So you have to select any two. Only you have to mention the recent technologies. So now let's see who is on the top of the table. Great. RF is still maintaining a lead, but it's a close, close fight between Hitesh and RF. Next question, please. What is an IOB? Please see the questions, read the questions properly, then answer them. The yeah. faster your response, the greater of your chances to leave the table. Last five seconds, guys, be quick. Okay, great. Next question, please. Let's see who's still on the top. So RF is clearly making a lead. RF and Nitesh, close point between both of them. Next question, please. Bit glass platform would have which of the following two solutions? Read it very carefully, guys. Bit glass platform would have which of the two solutions? Be quick, 10, sec 10 seconds to go. Okay, great, great. So let's see the results. Things are changing, but the top three are still maintained. Real fight between Ishwar and uh, Eskumar. Let's next question, please. And this is last and the final question for the first quiz. For the first quiz, yeah. The TNA includes which of the following two features? ZTN includes which of the following two features, guys? Be quick. Time is the key. Okay, so quiz one, let's see uh, who is the winner, Anil Kumar, Hitesh, and any guesses? Who is the first? RF. Congratulations to all three winners. And we have runner ups as well. So, top three would be receiving the gifts as shown by Akshay in the starting. We'll be reaching out to you to provide those things. Okay. So, Akshay, we can move to the next quiz. Yeah, please. So the second part of the quiz. So, Sandeep, if you can play the second quiz as well. Okay. Sandeep is playing the next quiz. Guys, again, now loading, we are loading the game. 
go and go to this again to this particular link and start logging in again ideally this would have happened in two different sets but because of the issue at that time we were not able to but quickly guys move to this particular Rohit comes Ashwar comes here and then let's see who is the second Anil comes okay run first one has all the count rf guys be quick be quick to come on code dot in with the spin we have 11 people already here 30 count is increasing we have s kumar so we have 16 people already in one is Suresh S, one other is Suresh Kumar. Suresh S, please request you to put your complete name. Actually, I guess we, we can another, start. Yeah, we have another five seconds to start. Sandeep, we can start another four, three, three seconds maybe. Yeah. Okay. So channel covered by first point dlp from a unified console r i just read it very carefully could be a trick one channels covered by first point dlp from a unified console r great there are 13 right answers Awesome. Rohit is leading the lead, leading the group at this moment. Let's go to the next question. A very interesting question. Uh, interesting use case has been showcased by Ayush in the lab for this one. Just remind that and uh, pick your answers carefully. Hurry up. So who, let's see, we're still on the top of the table. The oh. table changes, Ashwarya, oh. Ashwarya Tiwari is leading the table right now. Great. Next question, Force Point has a dedicated email DLP which contains we showed this use case a very the longest uh, of the one which we showed the entire process as to how this happens is guys be quick great i think we have got maximum right answers for this one but the table remains same <laughs> Correct. <laughs> the last two opportunities for you to gain the moment to gain the lead. Post point data guard is used in. Very tricky question. You have to give the answer after giving it a thought. Can you give a hint? Actually, can we give a hint? Is it one answer correct? Two answers? It's one answer, and I think uh, as we talked about conversions, so conversions yes. is something the key. Great. Oh, nine answers. Great. So, who is on the top? Oh, table changed. Last and the final opportunity, guys, be very careful. Post point data card helps in. Select any two. We talked about the use cases in detail. Select any two. Last 15 seconds. Last five seconds. Oh. 
Great. Great. So now we have the winners here. Pushkar. Five one zero uh, Pranati, and then we have number one RF. Oh, RF won both the quizzes. Congratulations, RF. Congratulations to all the winners. Congratulations to all the winners. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we'll reach out to the, all the winners. And uh, thanks for attending this session. Hope it was informative. Thanks, Dr. Shiram, for uh, getting us here and. Uh, Give, giving us an opportunity to present to this August audience. Thank you. Yes, hello. What a wonderful session and a very enlightening one and extremely practical also. I hope the audience took away many, many tips here. And also, I hope you took notes in the sense what areas to uh, really delve into and how to create an integrated solution and i'm certain you'll dig into the material more and to reach out to the relevant people the quiz was also extremely exciting so uh, thanks a lot uh, uh, akash and ayush on presenting this excellent session and also course point related solutions which are there they can certainly reach out to you yeah. absolutely so absolutely if you had any i hope you also answered some of the questions that people have posted uh, so so that uh, so if there any more questions are there please do reach out to them i hope your email id and all that okay feel free so to come, yeah. feel free to come to our booth we would be there to answer any of your questions oh uh, yeah certainly certainly and this was a wonderful day and also the remaining sections yeah please do not forget to browse them and attend the ones of your interest. So uh, ASS has something in it for everyone. And also regardless of your area of interest, whether it is cloud security or IoT security, or whether it is privacy. OK, uh, so it's filled with uh, wonderful sessions such as this one. OK, hope it was extremely enlightening to all of you. Thank you very much. With this, we close the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.